Hello everybody, Luke Schulte, the other grounds for X hybrids. While the current soybean commodity market isn't particularly encouraging, what I am optimistic about is the yield potential, particularly of these early planted soybean acres. But is it still worth applying a fungicide given the current commodity market if we don't have a lot of leaf disease pressure? Now the good news is many of our fungicides that are now considered PFR proven or profitable were tested in years like we're experiencing now with a lower commodity market. You can see by the screen in front of you, not only when the product earned the distinction of PFR proven, but you can also see the, the commodity price that we utilize to calculate our ROI, our return on investment. Now, the name fungicide implies they're a disease fighting mechanism. However, in soybeans, particularly in a year like this year where we don't have a lot of leaf disease pressure, I look at fungicides as more of a seed sizing tool. Most of our fungicides on the market today, virtually all of our PFR proven fungicides, contain a component called strobilurin. Strobilurin fungicides do more than just fight disease they actually lower the stress level of the plant. And if we can lower the stress level or that ethylene production of the plant, that allows that plant to retain a higher number of young and developing pods, as well as to devote more of that energy or that photosynthate to sizing soybean. Now the right growth stage is R3. We've heard that for quite some time. We've tested that over a number of years and found R3 to be the most profitable. The challenge with that is identifying not only when soybeans are in R3, but when they're gonna maintain and remain in R3. Now, if we look at a textbook, R3 says that's a quarter inch pod on the top four nodes on the main stem of the soybean. The challenge though is in indeterminate soybeans, and if we have slower growing conditions, soybeans can be at R3 one day, but then two days later, they might be in R2. What I mean by that is in indeterminate soybeans, two days later, they may put on a new uh, trifoliate and now that quarter inch pod that was on the fourth node down is now five nodes down and technically they're within, they're in R2. One thing that I found to be helpful to identify the beginning of the optimal timing to influence seed size is to not only identify a quarter inch pot on the top four nodes, but to also examine and look at the lower portion of the plant as well. And look for those pods on the bottom several nodes for the formation or the early development of seed. If we truly wanna lower that stress level for a longer period of time into seed formation and seed sizing, it's to time that fungicide that contains the strobilurin up with the beginning of seed formation in the bottom few nodes. Now we're at the beginning of that optimal timing to influence seed size. A couple other things though to consider as you're making that R3 fungicide trip is, be sure to include a fun, uh, an insecticide. It's not fully known why, but we've seen a synergistic effect with the inclusion of insecticide, even where it doesn't necessarily warrant because we don't have enough uh, feeding to justify that insecticide, we've seen that synergistic effect to make one plus one equal three. And then lastly is nutrition. We've seen a number of different nutrients pay, but nothing has been more consistent than the inclusion of boron. Boron serves several roles, quite a few roles in fact in soybeans, but namely at this time of the year, it's influencing pod retention, pod fill, as well as nodule performance or nodulation effectiveness. So something to consider to hopefully help you to better identify when is the beginning of pod fill and how to ultimately influence seed size.